I now want to show you another feature of the opccontrols.net product and that is the ability to redirect all connections of your OPC controls application of your standard Windows app from one data service to another and that's done with the OPC controls network nodes component. We only need one of these com controls per application. Let's just drag it on any one of the forms that we have here here we have our form design view and we drop on our OPC controls network nodes. Now let's use a standard button to implement the aliasing. So we'll just drop a button on the form and we'll set the text property of this button to alias. When we double click on that button We'll now call on the OPC controls network nodes to add a network node alias. What we are going to alias is all localhost tags that are defined to the local service to instead connect to a remote service. It could be an IP address, a network node name. Here we're going to use a registered domain name. So when we click on this button, it will redirect all connections from localhost that are defined to opcsystemserver.com. If we go back to the design view, To remove that or re redefine it, we'll change the text property of a standard button here called remove alias. Double click. And now we remove a network node alias and we just simply put in the original service name which was localhost so it will return all definitions that were previously aliased that are defined on the original localhost will return back to the original data source so now when we run this application if we go to debug start debugging We can see on our system we have the local security enabled, so we're able to see the local pump running, but we can't change it. We don't see the data from the local service. So now when we click on alias, we are now redirecting the data sources for these two to now be on that network service in Texas. So now I can turn that pump off. When I remove the alias, I am now back to the local connection. You see the pump is running locally back to the alias the pump is actually off on that remote system to see that in better form use the example application if you go to programs opcsystems.net and launch the example application and bring up the form called menu all This brings up a screen of local data, of trend data, alarm data, and local subscription data. We see that we have some of this data protected, so we will log in from the example application with our local username and password. And now we're given access privilege to the real-time data on that local service. But now let's select network node and click on the button that says OPC Systems Internet Server. We are now redirecting all real-time data to that remote service. So we're having the trend data, alarm data, and the OPC controls data with one method redirect to that remote service. Let's take a look at where that's done in the VB.NET example. If we view the Solution Explorer on the form called Form Main you will see code that performs a network node alias. Let's search for the word alias.
There we can see we're simply aliasing the lo all local host connections for whatever text is returned from the network node form. And that, with that one method, you're redirecting your entire application of all OPC controls components to that remote uh, source. This is a way you can do hot backup of client applications from one service to another and use the OPC controls data component for a way to monitor which service is currently healthy. In fact, you can have not only a primary and secondary backup, but as many different backup services as you would like and determine your own logic as to which service the client application should programmatically switch to. So far we have been defining the tag names during design mode. Let's see how to do that programmatically to redirect your controls data source from one tag to another. Let's drop another OPC controls label onto the form. At this time we will not define any tag data source. Note that the name of the control right now is OPC controls label 2. So let's go up to the name property and copy that so that we can use that in the code. Next let's drag a standard button onto the form. Let's define this one as ramp. A second button will define to sign. And a final button will define to random. So what we're going to do is we are going to programmatically define the property of the OPC systems tag property for the text property to ramp, sign, and random. Let's double click on the ramp button. So we'll take OPC controls label 2 dot text OPC systems underscore tag. That will be equal to ramp dot value. Remember that tag names are case sensitive so if you have a long tag name you want might want to browse for that tag name you can also use direct OPC connections here as well back to the design view for sign we'll use sign dot value and the final connection that we'll make is for random So now let's run this application. We can see that the text starts out at OPC controls label 2. In fact, we need to log in to make sure that we do have security privileges to access those points. So now when we click on the button ramp, we see that the data source for the OPC controls label 2 text is from ramp. When we click on sign, and then for random. This is a way you can create one form to then support thousands of different data points. To deploy your application is extremely simple. Because the opccontrols.net components are 100% managed, you can simply copy the executable along with the dependent DLLs to the remote system and they will work. You will want to make sure your tag definitions include an IP address, network node name, or registered domain name like we've been using so that the remote application uses a TCP connection and can actually work across the internet to get that remote data. You can also use Click Once Deployment built in with Microsoft Visual Studio. To view that, select View, Solution Explorer, select your project and right click on it to select Properties. Under the Publish tab is where you will find the Click Once Deployment, where you can deploy your application to a central location and then have it up 
automatically updated. We have another video describing smart client deployment and also from our webpage on opcsystems.com you can find a smart client link to see a live example. Under the references tab you'll see what DLLs are required to be shipped. For us it's the OPC controls DLL, the OPC systems browse computers DLL, and the OPC systems interface DLL. Those should all be included with your application when you're deploying it. If you have any other questions about opccontrols.net, you can visit the website opcsystems.com and contact us under the sales page or in any one of our distributors that are located worldwide.